Hey YouTube, it's the test lead. And today's video is how to build the perfect QA resume. Before we start, make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at just underscore Bailey. I know I haven't been active in the past that much. I'm trying to be more active now, so let's build a community guys. And now onto the video. I'll make a future video on actually applying to jobs, but before you can apply, you gotta build your resume. Your resume is the first impression that any potential employer has of you. If you haven't been getting callbacks for interviews, your resume may be the problem. There is no magical one size fits all template for resumes, but this video will always be a good starting point for creating a resume. The most important part of a resume is the structure. If an employer looks at your resume and it's just a bunch of words and random things thrown on the paper, they're not gonna take you serious. So make sure you have structure. So the first topic is, formatting. You want to make sure that your resume looks professional. As I say, you don't want a potential employer looking at your resume and thinking this person isn't taking it serious because they threw a bunch of words on a paper and expect me to read it. For formatting, there are some high level standards that you should follow. First, use bullet points for listings of several different pieces of information. This helps the readability when compared to a large paragraph. Let's look at this paragraph here and then these bullet points. A quick glance, what's easier to read? Next, select a simple and easy to read font such as Arial. Next, make the name and section header size 14 font. All other fonts should be either 10 or 12 point size. To emphasize the most important parts, you put those in a slightly bigger font. Everything else, put in 10 font. And finally, the margin should be about one inch. Now, what should actually be on your resume? First off, contact information. This is by far the most important part. No matter how good your resume is, if they can't contact you, then what's the point? The contact information should be the first thing that appears on your resume. It should include your name, phone number, and professional email address at minimum. Emphasis on professional email address. Email addresses are free to make from Gmail. Go to google.com, create a new account, use your first name and last name and possibly a middle initial and number at the end just to make sure it's unique. But besides that, it should be professional. It shouldn't be Queen's Finest or the cool kid or anything like that. No, they don't want a cool kid. They want a professional person working for them. So make sure a professional email is presented on your resume. And here's an example right now. As you can see, it has my first and last name, the town I live in. No, I'm not giving my exact address because this resume might get passed around. You don't know what hands I might end up in. So just my general town and state, that's good enough. And then my email address and phone number. Next, under your contact information should be either your objective or summary. Either one is okay but make sure you have one of them at least. If you are a candidate with more work experience, you may want to use a summary to describe your relevant work experience related to the job that you're applying for. If you have less experience or none, you may want to enter an objective statement that states your goal in your career. Now, here's an example of an objective statement. I am a highly motivated recent computer science graduate with a 3.5 GPA looking to obtain an automation engineer position at Coinbase. I hope to use my strong programming skills and testing skills to be an effective asset as a team member here. So where are we now? We have your contact information. We have your initial sales pitch with the objective or summary. And now let's talk about your skills. Now that we have the higher level things, we're getting to the subtopics. In this section, you want to list your hard skills and soft skills. Your hard skills are any technical skills and your soft skills are any interpersonal skills. So an example of a hard skill can be knowing a programming language. An example of a soft skill can be, I'm a fast learner. Look closely at any skills listed in the job description that you are applying for. Try to also add these to your resume so that you can show up in queries for those keywords. Any certifications, programming languages, or tools required for this job should also be listed here. An example of technical skills, Software, Rational Quality Manager, Jira, Azure DevOps. 
Automation Tools, Selenium, Postman, Rational Functional Tester, Programming Languages, C Sharp, Java, C++, SQL. So at this point, we have our contact information in case they want to reach us, our initial objective, our skills to say what we offer, and now we're going to talk about our work history. This is showing that, okay, I'm telling you X, Y, and Z, but also have these previous projects in my past to back it up. The work history should be relevant jobs that are related to the job that you're applying for. If you're applying for a QA role and had a job as a babysitter, that probably should be left off. Unless you can somehow make a direct correlation between attention to detail as a babysitter and possibly carrying that over as a QA person. But besides that, make sure it's actually directly related to the job you're applying for. Recruiters and employers value their time. So once they see irrelevant information on a resume, they may just go to the next one. And I know what you're thinking. What if you lack the experience in your field? You can list any type of internships you had, any volunteer work. Maybe you volunteered your help at a local store in the community to test their brand new website, which is a good idea just for the experience points and to write on your resume. This thing can be a talking point in interviews as you walk them through the process of testing that took place. Your work history should also be listed from the most recent to the oldest where your last job you had is listed first and your oldest job is listed last. You should also be brief when listing your job history and giving a description. Once again, stick with the relevant information that shows you can do the job that you're applying for. Let's say at your previous job you did X, Y, and Z, but your new job only cares about X. Make sure you put X first so you can emphasize it. Try to use action verbs such as created or developed when talking about your past experiences. Example, work experience. 2018 till present. And note, when I say to present, that means I currently work at that job. Google Ads team, senior automation engineer. And now I'm gonna describe what I did. I utilized Agile methodology with two week sprint cycles. Created test plans and organized the testing strategies for my team. I worked with business and product owners to discuss the requirements and scope of testing new features. I created automation test suites using Selenium. So as you can see, I was brief and to the point with each item that I did and I used action verbs. And now to wrap it up, an education section. Anytime you can add an education section to your resume, it's beneficial. If you have a BS degree from university, add it here. If you have relevant coursework, add it here. If you don't have a formal university degree, but you took boot camps or something of that nature, also add it here. This is your final selling point for a potential employer. An example would be BS degree in computer programming and information systems from Farmerdale State College, which is in Farmerdale, New York. My GPA was a 3.4 out of four. As you can see, I also added a GPA. If your GPA is above three, I would add it. But if it's anything below that, I wouldn't add it. I also add the university I went to, but a GPA below three, just don't add it. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you for watching. That's the basic template or format for writing a QA resume. If you found this video helpful at all, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any comments, suggestions, or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you want another video just like this, please click here. And hey, don't forget to learn something new today.